Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, some 40 years ago, was on a fast track in his career, and all of a sudden, God invaded his living room, flattened him to the floor, and instantly downloaded, in picture form, the stories of the Bible as if he was there. And he said that very few of the end time views of what's going to happen in the last days are correct because they don't understand the Jew and Israel. And once you do, it's simple. Uh, I protest. Why do I protest? Because Dr. Richard Booker had such a supernatural experience with God. Uh, Richard walked down the aisle as a, a Southern Baptist. Uh, but then God enmeshed in his career, Occidental Petroleum, your top executive, you were on a fast track. And all of a sudden, uh, almost out of the blue, he gets a insatiable hunger. Now remember, he, he, all he knows is he walked down the aisle and you know he believes the gospel, but that's on the side burner. And all of a sudden he's hungry for God. So tell me about the day that God answered that hunger. You know, Sid, God is so wonderful. And I, I didn't have a Bible, but I was supposed to, I was invited to go to a Bible study by my business friends. So I had to go to something called a Christian bookstore and get a Bible. And I came home and, and I started reading at Leviticus. Does it everybody? <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. That's enough to stop you. <laughs> right in the tracks. <laughs> but you know, the devil keeps people out of Leviticus because that's the mother load of the gospel in the first testament. Hmm. But anyway, I started reading Leviticus. Then I started studying it. I am educated, I know how to study, but then I got one of those big concordances, you know. And the Bible says if you seek God with your whole heart, you'll find him. You've got to run into him sooner or later. So one day in 1974, as I was studying Leviticus, I had this encounter with God where it was like I was on the Emmaus Road where Jesus appeared to two of his disciples. So, what are you discussing? You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about the things that happened there the last few days. What things? the things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles. It's like the Holy Spirit let me be a third disciple Jesus. to hear what Jesus said. As it is written by Moses and all of the prophets, Moses was once told that there would be a greater prophet than him, and I am that prophet. And God instantly and dramatically downloaded in a heaven second, whatever that is, the entire Bible into my core being and we have 66 books in our Bible. So Sid, it was like 66 bombs going off inside me. I literally thought I would die. I, I, I literally hid under my desk. You know how humans do silly things. Right. God can't find me there, you know. I hid under my... <laughs> now, now, your wife had the same background as you. Oh, and what did she think when she saw you flat on the floor? Yeah, I understand you couldn't even walk without 
on all, except you can walk on all fours crawling. I did hide under my desk I and I begged you. God not to show me, show me anymore. I literally thought I would explode. The human being can't take a whole lot of the Creator, you know. Well, but I, but I couldn't walk for a while. I pulled myself along on the carpet, trying to get to the couch with every ounce of energy I could get and pulled myself up on the couch, rolled up there, and just would lay there for hours until the weight of the glory of God would lift. And John the Baptist said that Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Said my hands were on fire and they were burning, they, they, they were hot. Well, I was a Baptist, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I put, you know, this is not supposed to happen, you know, but it happened to me. So I put my hands under the faucet, thinking the water would cool my hands. <laughs> it didn't help a bit, the fire was on the inside. <laughs> this changed my life dramatically. Uh, Sid, when this, the whole Bible, people don't know that the Bible is a picture book. And all of the Hebrew Bible, what Christians call the Old Testament, is just a picture of a person. When you get a puzzle, the first thing you look at is the picture. And that tells you what it's supposed to look like. I, I, even seeing the picture, I have a hard time putting a thousand pieces together. Exactly. Well, so often the Christians, we read these stories maybe in the Bible or we maybe went to Sunday school and heard little stories, but it doesn't really connect. They don't grasp, I didn't grasp, that the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, we call the Old Testament Christian, it's a picture of a person. And every part of the Hebrew Bible is a little puzzle. And when you put it all together, it's a picture of the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. You have spent the last 40 years after this download studying keys that most Christians don't study. You have studied the Jewish culture, the nation Israel, their geography, their geology, their archaeology. Uh, why was this so important to study the Jew in Israel? Be because, I uh, said, what we have is a Bible that's a Middle Eastern book. But we live in the Western world here, and we're trying to understand the Bible as if it was a Western theological seminary book. Well, Jesus was and is and always will be a Jew. He taught in his culture using Jewish idioms and figures of speech. But these were idioms that you can't right. take literally because they meant something different uh, in the Eastern culture than they do in the Western. But what he found was there was a total understanding of the scenario and, and sequence of events of the end times that was really different than what most people teach. And he also found something about the biblical feasts, and he found the time to get the most miracles. We'll be right back. If you love watching our It's Supernatural! TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. Now, I have a lot of friends, of course, being Jewish, that celebrate the Jewish feasts. But Richard said the Jewish feasts are not just the Jewish feasts, they're the biblical feasts. So why today is it so important for a Christian to celebrate and, 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 be, and understand these feasts? Well, you can't understand the Bible without doing this, Sid. First of all, these are not the feasts of the Jews, as you said. These are the feasts of the Lord. It says it very clearly in the Bible, for all of God's covenant people, for all times to observe and celebrate. Yeah, actually, in Leviticus, it says, God says, these are my feasts. That's why you say the feasts of the Lord. Now, Jesus was the reality 
of these pictures. He was the person the pictures were pointing to. So he was crucified at Passover. He was buried at unleavened bread. He was resurrected at first fruits. He sent the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Shavuot. He's and that, by the way, that's, he just pointed out the history of the first coming of Jesus. So if you were a Jewish person and you understood the feasts, not with the rabbinic understanding of 2,000 years ago, but the biblical understanding, you would not have missed Jesus' first coming. Richard, this is so precise. When you, when this first dawned on you, what happened to you? I went, I went crazy in the spirit. <laughs> the zeal of the Lord consumed me. Well, you were talking about Passover. <laughs> Passover, <laughs> what well, comes from uh, what Christians call the Last Supper or communion. Right, right. Uh, and, it's, and they actually had the first communion where Jesus explained it. And you said more miracles happen when believers take communion than almost any other time. Uh, why is that? Because the, the, the idea of being a true believer is, is that you, are, have, you have union with God. The Holy Spirit of God comes to live inside you. And the, the best graphic illustration of that and visual is when you're taking communion. Communion, I'm in you. You're in me. The two of us have become one. Now, most communion services kind of border on funeral services, you know, being nice here. But the Lord said, this is the time you are to celebrate the blood covenant union that you have with me. Tell me one person that while they were celebrating this after hearing your revelation, uh, got healed. Well, there was a lady in Florida, I remember, and she was a, a godly little Pentecostal lady, and this might blow up people's theologies, but th it is what it is. And uh, she had had heart problems for years, Sid. And during this teaching, while she's taking the cup and while she's taking the bread, this is what encouraged people to expect a miracle when you take the cup and bread. She heard a noise inside her, a voice inside her. And she thought it was the Lord giving her a new prayer language. But as this voice got louder, she could tell it was not the Spirit of God's voice. It, it was ugly voice. And, and so what happened was, while she was taking the cup and the bread, this spirit had been lodged in the physical organ of her heart for years, I suppose. And when she took the cup and the bread, she felt this spirit come out of her heart, up through her, her uh, neck and out of her vocal cords, out of her mouth. She was instantly healed and delivered by taking the bread and the cup. You know, Hallelujah. The book of Revelation said, <laughs> the devil is overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Now, when we come back, if the first feasts were fulfilled so specifically for the first coming of Jesus, I want to see the order. I want to see it with about the if there is tribulation, where, where the rapture is. I mean, look at all these different views. He spent 40 years studying it, had it downloaded from God. I want to hear what God has shown him. Do you? Call now and get Dr. Richard Booker's anointed book, Celebrating Jesus in the Biblical Feasts, plus his powerful three-part audio CD prophetic teaching series, Israel, the Church, and the End Times, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Ask for offer number 9434. But wait, you can add this beautiful 16-month 2016-2017 Hebrew Heritage Calendar for a total of $49. Ask for offer number 9435. Shipping and handling is included through Richard 
Booker's anointed book, you will learn to encounter God and the supernatural in a fresh, powerful way by unlocking the prophetic and spiritual significance of the seven biblical feasts of the Lord. Through this book, you will obtain a fuller comprehension of God's plan of redemption, gain greater access to the supernatural of God when celebrating God's appointed times, understand the role that Israel has in Bible prophecy and current events. Plus, you will receive Dr. Booker's powerful three-part audio CD prophetic teaching series, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. He takes the complexity of the end-time Bible prophecy and makes it easy to understand. Through this series, you will receive the keys that will prepare you and your family for what is next on God's prophetic calendar. Understand the season of Jesus' soon return. Learn how to discern the prophetic signs and how to be prepared. Understand how you can be a part of the greatest end-time harvest about to occur on planet Earth. For an additional amount, we will include the 16-month 2016-2017 Hebrew Heritage Calendar. In it, you will find the dates when each of the biblical feasts occur. It includes this amazing chart of Hebrew feasts, explaining what each feast meant to Israel, how the early church celebrated the feasts, how you can observe God's appointed times today, the end-time prophetic significance of the feasts. Plus, the calendar contains the following in Hebrew, transliteration, and in English, the Aaronic blessing, the Hebrew alphabet, and so much more. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Richard Booker's anointed book, Celebrating Jesus in the Biblical Feasts, plus his powerful three-part audio CD prophetic teaching series, Israel, the Church, and the End Times, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Ask for offer number 9434. But wait, you can add this beautiful 16-month 2016-2017 Hebrew Heritage Calendar for a total of $49. Ask for offer number 9435. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can send your check of $35 or $49 to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9434 for the book and audio CD teaching or offer number 9435 to include the Hebrew calendar or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. I, I have so much I need to ask Richard. Uh, Richard, you told me a great uh, revelation open to you when one day you were reading Deuteronomy and you saw the whole history of the Jewish people all through the last days. Tell me about that. Well, it's pretty amazing. The seed of Bible prophecy, of all Bible prophecy, is in the book of Deuteronomy. Christians don't read that, so they miss it. So I would study. But why do Christians not read the Well, Old because they, they kind of... Forget Deuteronomy, <laughs> just the whole Old Testament. Well, they, they kind of told that Jesus did away with all that, and we don't need all that anymore, and that was Jewish stuff. No, it's, it's Jesus stuff. These are Jesus festivals. The feasts are Jesus festivals. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So, you found... <laughs> Ten points in Deuteronomy. Explain that. Well, in Deuteronomy, uh, Moses was is, was is giving the sermon, and it's amazing. Said he gave the whole future of the Jewish people from then until the Messiah comes, and this is before they were even a nation, before they ever got into the land. So I'm reading this stuff, and I said, my goodness, this sounds familiar. You know, this sounds like world history. So I'm going to check out. Did the prophets have anything to say about this? Well, of course they did. They filled in details, you know. Then I studied world history to see, does this line up in any way? And of those 10 points, everything has happened in world history exactly like Moses said. So there were 10 points that take you all to the return of Jesus? Oh, absolutely. Uh, of the 10 points... Where are we today? <laughs> well, I thought you might ask that. <laughs> We're at point seven and a half. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Sounds okay. <laughs> That's is, pretty good. What is that point? <laughs> well, point seven was the Jewish people would return to their ancient land. And so about half of the Jewish people that we know of are in Israel, about six or seven million, and the other seven million or so that we know of are scattered still among the nations. That's why I say seven and a half. Okay, we're at between seven and eight. <laughs> and if you've been reading the newspapers lately, look what's happening with the anti-Semitism in Europe. I mean, whole groups of Jews in France that never thought they'd ever go to Israel 
are now living in Israel. They have a whole village uh, that's French speaking. Uh, so we're about ready to see the eighth thing happen. Uh, the, 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 uh, what is the eighth? Well, the Jewish sages of, from all times and scholars have always said that as we get close to the coming of Messiah, it will be perilous times times of chaos. That sounds like Jesus. <laughs> it's, well, he's a Jewish teacher and rabbi, right? <laughs> Moses says, when you are in tribulation in the latter days, he qualifies it. He tells us when. So Jewish people have always believed perilous times. So when this Orthodox Jew Saul of Tarsus, the Apostle Paul, wrote perilous times. He wasn't writing some kind of Christian statement. He was writing what had always been part of their understanding. And so God calls the, Jew, the, the Christian people to come alongside and stand with the Jewish people against anti-Semitism and support them because Christians owe everything that's dear to us spiritually to the Jewish people. Well, that's what Romans 11 says. Now, very briefly, take me through some of the last God feasts, uh, Feast of Trumpets, uh, 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 the, uh, the Rosh, uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and uh, Sukkot. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's clarify. There's three major feast seasons, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And there's seven individual feasts within those three feast seasons. Jesus historically did the first two to the T and the letter, every jot and tittle. If he got the first two right, what do you think he's going to get number three? I got it. Feast of Tabernacles is the end time Feast in the in the Bible it says the natural leads to the spiritual. So in the natural, the Feast of Tabernacles is the end of the agricultural season when all the big harvest has been done. So looking at it spiritually, the Feast of Tabernacles is the great harvest of souls at the end of the age before Messiah comes. We're going to soon see the greatest explosion on the face of the earth, spiritual explosion that the world has ever seen. So, <laughs> but, but you actually, from the seventh, what is the seventh trump? Well, the, the, of course, in the book of Revelation, there's the, the seven seals, and the seventh seal is the seven trumpets, and the seventh trumpet is the seven vile or bold judgment. So the seventh trumpet is the last trump. That makes sense. I think it's going to be on the Feast of Trumpets. Well, that sure makes sense. You said something. God has shown you there is going to be a move of God's Spirit that's just about ready to happen now. Uh, describe what God's shown you. Well, the glory of God is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea up to a point before Messiah comes. But what we're going to see is a, a moving away from the proclamation of the gospel of salvation, which has kind of been the Western focus, to the gospel of the kingdom. Now, if you read in the New Testament, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. And every time he did, there were signs and wonders that followed. So as we move from the gospel of salvation to the gospel of the kingdom, the signs and wonders we've all desperately longed for are going to explode on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. All right. I can just tell you this. This is the clearest presentation that I've studied of Dr. Booker of the end times. But what is more important is are you going to be proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom? You have to make Jesus your king, not just your savior. That's a, a Western idea. You have to make Jesus your king. Think about it. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Richard Booker, a 30-year-old high-level executive businessman at a major company, Occidental Petroleum, had a powerful encounter with God's presence. It was so intense that he hid under his desk and couldn't stand up. While literally crawling on all fours, God downloaded the entire Bible to him instantly in picture form. He has studied the Bible for 40 years concerning Jewish culture and the end times. Well, we have a Middle Eastern book and we try to read it and understand it as if it's a Western book. Jesus was a Jewish man and he's returning as a Jewish man, the line from the tribe of Judah, the root and offspring of David. So we have to get into his culture and learn his kinds of phrases and, and figures of speech and idioms. Dr. Richard Booker unlocks the keys God gave him to understand the Bible and our connection to Israel and the biblical feasts. He has taught thousands these ancient biblical keys to access the supernatural and to know end time prophecy in an easy to understand way. Now he wants to impart this to you. Call now and get Dr. Richard Booker's anointed book, Celebrating Jesus in the Biblical Feasts, plus his powerful three-part audio CD prophetic teaching series, Israel the Church and the End Times, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Ask for offer number 9434. But wait, you can add this beautiful 16-month 2016-2017 Hebrew Heritage Calendar for a total of $49. Ask for offer number 9435. Shipping and handling is included. Through Richard Booker's anointed book, you will learn to encounter God and the supernatural in a fresh, powerful way by unlocking the prophetic and spiritual significance of the seven biblical feasts of the Lord. Through this book, you will obtain a fuller comprehension of God's plan of redemption, gain greater access to the supernatural of God when celebrating God's appointed times, understand the role that Israel has in Bible prophecy and current events, learn how the biblical feasts of the Lord unite families in their worship of Jesus in a powerful way. Plus, you will receive Dr. Booker's powerful three-part audio CD prophetic teaching series, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. He takes the complexity of the end-time Bible prophecy and makes it easy to understand. Through this series, you will receive the keys that will prepare you and your family for what is next on God's prophetic calendar. Understand the season of Jesus' soon return. Learn how to discern the prophetic signs and how to be prepared. Understand how you can be a part of the greatest end time harvest about to occur on planet Earth. For an additional amount, we will include the 16-month 2016-2017 Hebrew Heritage Calendar. In it, you will find the dates when each of the biblical feasts occur. It includes this amazing chart of Hebrew feasts explaining what each feast meant to Israel, how the early church celebrated the feasts, how you can observe God's appointed times today, the end time prophetic significance of the feasts. Plus, the calendar contains the following in Hebrew, transliteration and in English, the Aaronic blessing, the Hebrew alphabet, words and Jewish idiom from the Holy Scriptures, the most sacred Jewish prayer of the Shema, hear O Israel, and so much more. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Richard Booker's anointed book, celebrating Jesus in the Biblical Feasts, plus his powerful three-part audio CD prophetic teaching series, Israel, the Church, and the End Times, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Ask for offer number 9434. But wait, you can add this beautiful 16-month 2016-2017 Hebrew Heritage Calendar for a total of $49. Ask for offer number 9435. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can send your check of $35 or $49 to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9434 for the book and audio CD teaching, or offer number 9435 to include the Hebrew calendar, or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. My friend has a revelation from God. He has found the game changer where you win every time. I want him to teach you this revelation. Yeah.